This one's been a long time coming. I first saw the ASUS NUC 14 Pro AI Mini unveiled in June at Computex 2024, and it looked like a quarter four release that year. Not sure why it's not called the NUC 15. I didn't bother to ask. The outer case material has switched from metal to plastic, but it's very nice quality with a solid feel to it. I've seen some pretty bad plastic over the years. <laughs> Sticking to the NUC trend, the bottom plate is metal. This Mini has a slick design, heavy on the rounded edges, and each port is clearly labelled. Overall, it's one of the best looking Minis released in recent memory, and looks even nicer in person than in stock photos. But what's more important is what's inside it. This Mini was codenamed Lunar Canyon, and that's because it features Intel's latest Lunar Lake CPU. Three options are available, the Core Ultra 5, 7, and 9. ASUS has loaned me the flagship model featuring Intel's Core Ultra 9 288V, which succeeds the Core Ultra 9 185H found in the ASUS NUC 14 Pro Plus. What do all these model numbers mean? Only Intel knows. Thanks, Steve. I'm Rob. Hardware unboxed is further south. Intel's 288V has a lower core count of just eight, with four cores being performance and the other four low power efficient. Hyperthreading has also been defenestrated. <laughs> Oh, and this Mini can also AI, as you might have noticed from the name, and some AI benchmarks will debut in this review. How exciting. What's most interesting is the updated Arc Graphics part of the chip based on Intel's latest Battle Mage graphics architecture. Promising to narrow the gap between Intel and AMD, will it deliver? We'll see. In the box is a not so compact 120 watt power supply, a downgrade from the previous compact 150 watt. There's also a monitor mount and screws. The Mini has a fingerprint sensor on the top of it if you prefer to sign into Windows that way, and also includes an inbuilt speaker and microphone. The front has an audio jack, two USB 3 5 gigabit ports, Thunderbolt 4, and a Windows Copilot button for all that AI. Or some of it. None of it? Does anyone actually use Windows Copilot? The back has an Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN jack, another Thunderbolt 4, HDMI 2.1 TMDS, and two USB 3.10 gigabit. So that's three displays natively with this mini. USB-C power delivery did not work over the Thunderbolt 4 ports when I tried to power my portable monitor, nor when I tried to power the mini with a USB-C monitor. Inside is an Intel Wi-Fi 7 BE201 for the latest in wireless and Bluetooth. At the time of recording, I couldn't find the price for this mini as this is a review sample and it's not available at retail just yet. Opening it up is even easier than previous NUX. Unlock the bottom plate and pull it out with a piece conveniently sticking out. Inside is the M.2 Gen 4 NVMe SSD slot and the M.2 wireless card. That's it. The included 32GB of memory is soldered on this time around using LPDDR5X running at 8533 mega transfers to give the integrated graphics a real boost. DDR5-5600 just doesn't cut it for these high-end integrated graphics chips. Maybe CSODOM in the future will change that. Windows Elon Pro was included with this sample. McAfee malware, I mean software, was pre-installed, so I removed that before getting into the benchmarks. I was pleasantly surprised to see that the latest Ubuntu 2404.2 worked fine with this mini. Now on to the benchmarks. In single core Cinebench, Intel manages to match AMD's flagship HX370 CPU currently available in minis. That's a 5% increase from the previous ASUS NUC with the Ultra 9 185H. Increasing the fan profile in the BIOS gives a consistent, very small boost, so I've added it in. Multicore takes a big hit due to the lack of P-cores and hyperthreading. But taking the best scores, the previous flagship NUC from ASUS is up 66% and the HX370 is up by 111%. Yikes. I mean, oh. In Cinebench Multicore, the 288V is around Ryzen 6600H level, which is unimpressive to say the least. Geekbench confirms the single core being around HX370 level, but this time it's up by 14% over the previous gen 185H. The 288V does better in Geekbench Multicore, now closer to a Core Ultra 5 125H. Again, comparing best scores, the previous ASUS stock is ahead by over 25%, while the HX370 is up by 36%. Not as huge gains as in Cinebench, but still substantial. 
The 288V is nothing special in H.264 video encoding. Around AMD 6000 series flagships, the 185H and HX370 are plenty ahead. Unsurprisingly, it's also a similar result using AV1 software encoding. Shifting the encoding workload to the integrated graphics, the 288V performed around an Ultra 5 125H from previous gen, which is close to the HX370 but far off the 185H. Also disappointing considering the new graphics architecture. There's no great way to measure AI performance at the moment, but I used Geekbench AI to at least give an indication of which mini is better. Here's the CPU chart using the ONNX framework. It's what you'd expect based on the previous CPU data, and here's the GPU chart showing a nice generational improvement for the 288V, and it's unbeaten in half precision. For some reason, the quantized score falls to the bottom with GPU. I'm uh, not into AI if you couldn't tell already. Now we move on to 3 d Mark to see how the integrated graphics compare to previous gen. Look at that, the 288V takes the top spot in 3 d Mark Fire Strike. Don't get an e-boner just yet though, Intel optimizes for benchmarks instead of real GPU tests, which we've proven over and over again. But don't take it from me, here it is from Intel's Tom Peterson. We optimize for benchmark, not exactly optimizing for real games. And that's another, uh, you know, big mistake that's gotten corrected in BattleMage. Yikes. I mean, oh, that sounds good, but we'll see if that's true shortly. In any case, it's still an improvement of around 18% over the previous gen arc found in the Intel 185H. Interestingly, in DX12 TimeSpy, the 288V soars ahead of even AMD's flagship. This time, it's a 20% improvement. Looks like Intel hasn't been optimizing for the Steel Nomad benchmark as much as the top HX370 minis came out ahead. The gen on gen improvement this time is around 8.5%. Okay, time for the game tests. I'll add the previous gen Intel Core Ultra 9 185H along with the AMD Ryzen HX370 side by side. All done with native rendering, no upscalers or frame generation. Starting with the CPU heavy esports games. The Ultra 9 288V in the ASUS NUC has the lowest average frame rate of the three. You can also see the CPUs working the hardest with the previous gen Intel Mini winning this round. Joke's over. You're dead. However, the 288V does impress with Dota 2 and has the highest frame rate. Counter-Strike 2 is also an improvement over previous gen, with around the same result as the HX370. League of Legends sees a slight improvement over previous gen on the frame rate, and the GPU utilization is much lower. Anger gives motivation without purpose. Now on to the AAA games, which push the GPU to the limit. At least, I hope so. There's around a 20% improvement in Ghost of Tsushima with the 288V. In Cyberpunk, the 288V has an even bigger improvement over last gen, but the HX370 is still around 15% faster on top of that. Robocop Rogue City is a game where the Intel GPUs struggle. Still, there's been a huge generational improvement of almost 45%. AMD's HX370 though is on another level. Hellblade 2 separates the GPUs almost identically by a couple of frames each, which is around a 10% improvement each time. This dark lad, he pushes back. 
God of War Ragnarok is one of the most impressive showings for the Intel 288V, almost matching the HX370 and a ginormous 58% increase over the previous gen. Space Marine 2 sees a large boost, but the HX370 is again far ahead. Baldur's Gate 3 is another game where the 288V has a nice win over the previous gen and not too far off the best result. Indiana Jones is also a big improvement. Intel has typically done really well in emulation, and the Lunar Lake CPU is very impressive in SEMU. It's the first mini with integrated graphics to hold above 60 FPS in Breath of the Wild. Well done Intel, it finally happened. It also takes the top spot in PS3 emulation. When a mini can finally play Killzone 2 at 60 FPS using integrated graphics, that'll really be something. Anyway, overall a nice generational leap by Intel on the GPU side, but really depends on the game. I wouldn't say the 3D Mark numbers check out, but it's far better than the previous gen Meteor Lake Arc graphics. If you want even more gaming performance, you can use a Thunderbolt or USB 4 compatible eGPU dock like I'm using here. Unfortunately, this mini quickly failed the audio latency test using latency mon with Cinebench running in the background. Unsure why the DCP execution time is so long, as it's not from thermal throttling. Moving on to video editing, and Intel's latest continues the trend of providing the snappiest editing experience in Adobe Premiere. While I don't have a benchmark to prove it, this subjectively feels like the most responsive of any mini tested with integrated graphics. It's just a shame there's no SD card reader on the side of the Mini to make it a complete editing workstation. This ASUS NUC14 Pro AI came with a WD Gen4 1TB NVMe SSD. 3D Mark score for the drive was similar to a bunch of Gen4 drives. Maximum SSD temp was pretty high with a 30 minute thrash test. That controller temp is nearing the point of no return. Also known as thermal throttling. This Mini has the best Bluetooth range of any tested. Very impressive, and the Wi-Fi test at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band also passed with no dropouts or other issues. Idle Power Draw recorded slightly higher than the previous gen, but it's still below average. Lunar Lake draws quite a bit less power overall than the Core Ultra 185H and AMD's Ryzen HX370. NUC 14 Pro AI chugged less than 80 watts maximum over all the testing. Of course, the multi-core performance doesn't compare to the other two, so it's not all sunshine and unicorns. One good outcome of a lower power draw is less heat to deal with, and maximum CPU temp for once is lower for an Intel flagship than most. It's also a rare moment where the higher fan profile means a lower CPU temperature and not just better performance. This is also good news for fan noise. I found the NUC14 Pro AI to be pleasant to use with its default balanced fan profile. Personally, I wouldn't run it with a performance profile as the noise shoots up quite a bit for little performance gain. I'd rather let the CPU cook for a bit more and make my ears happy. But it all depends on how much fan noise annoys you. And it definitely annoys me. The NUC14 Pro AI is a pretty compact unit, taking up less volume than your average mini PC. It's similar to Intel NUCs of old. To get into the BIOS, use the delete key after powering it on. In cooling, you'll find the fan mode setting. In advanced video, you'll see the integrated graphics uses as much RAM as it needs within the OS. Why doesn't it work like this on the AMD side as well? 
For the HX370, VRAM is allocated manually and no longer usable by the OS instead of sharing the pool as needed. Lame. In power, secondary power settings, wake on LAN and power failure options are available, and that's about it really. Alright then, let's go over the findings. Design and aesthetics are a big win for the ASUS NUC 14 Pro AI. Single core performance on the latest Intel chip is very good. The Battle Mage Arc integrated graphics have dramatically improved, narrowing the gap. But the gap is still there against the Radeon 890M found in the HX370. Wireless and Bluetooth range is really good. The default balance fan profile has lower noise than most minis. However, multi-core performance has taken a nosedive. There's barely any upgradability since the memory is soldered on, and only one M.2 storage slot is included. Also, the 120 watt power brick included with this one is too large. We've seen many smaller options being shipped with minis for a while now. Overall, I was hoping to say the ASUS NUC 14 Pro AI is better in every way than its predecessor, but that's not the case. While it is better in many ways, there are some shortcomings which we've already gone over in great detail. This mini best suits those not fast about multi-core performance and won't need more than one storage drive or 32GB of RAM. So that's Intel's flagship Lunar Lake benchmarked and another notch on the old belt. In the future, I plan to compare it against the Radeon 780M found in the Ryzen 7 and 8000 series CPUs. So what do you think about Intel's latest and the ASUS NUC 14 Pro AI? Let me know in the comments and if you want to see a gaming mini PC in action, check out my review of the ASUS ROG NUC right here. Cheers!